Hello everyone, welcome to Bio School and today we will discuss about the part 3 of fertilization in sea urchin. In the part 1 we have discussed chemo attraction, acrosomal reaction, fusion of sperm and egg plasma membrane. Part 2a we have discussed the fast block of polyspermy. Part 2b described the slow block of polyspermy in sea urchin. I have given the link in the description box. Those who have not watched those videos please do watch. And uh, today we will focus on activation of egg metabolism and fusion of genetic material. At the end we will discuss about previous year CSIR UGC net questions. So here you go. Activation of egg metabolism. In sea urchin the egg is a sludge cell. Okay. So when the egg is get activated, the egg is get activated when it is fused by the sperm. In the activation of egg metabolism, it has divided into two responses. The first one is the early response. The early response which is occur within the second of a cortical granule reaction. And the late response is it the name indicates that it, it takes place several minutes after the fertilization begins. So now discuss about the early response. So when the, the sperm it binds to the egg then that uh, that may be if more than one sperm that bind then that lead to the polish pomy. So more EC urchin it has a mechanism to prevent the polish pomy. There are the two mechanisms of prevention of polish pomy in the first block which was mediated by the change in electrical potential of egg plasma membrane and the slow block of polish pomy that is mediated by the cortical granule reaction. In the cortical granule reaction it is mediated by the calcium ion that calcium when the calcium ion is released that is also essential for the activation of egg increase in the concentration of the calcium ion within the egg that lead to the activation of all the eggs okay so what will happen when the calcium ion concentration it will be increases in the egg then that lead to the activation of an enzyme that enzyme is called the nad plus kinase nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide kinase that enzyme nad plus kinase it will convert the nad to nadp plus okay nad plus kinase it will convert the nad to nadp plus nadp plus it will act as an coenzyme it will act as an coenzyme for lipid biosynthesis and that is required for the construction of many new cell membrane during the process of cleavage okay then another effect of the calcium another effect of the calcium that involves in the oxygen consumption and it causes the respiratory burst what is the respiratory burst the respiratory burst it leads to the formation of the reactive oxygen species like uh, superoxide ion hydrogen peroxide ion those reactive oxygen species are the spermicidal spermicidal it is it will be helpful in the prevention of the polyspermy that will be kill the sperm the extra sperms okay but reactive oxygen species or the free radical if it will be present in the cell then that may cause the damage to the dna and the egg of the early embryo there will be enzyme okay uh, there are the some antioxidants like uh, glutathione redoxidase glutathione it is an antioxidant it will um, its activity depends on the nadph NADPH what it will cause it will keep the glutathione in is the reduced state when the glutathione it will be in is the reduced state then it will act as a cofactor for glutathione peroxidase and the glutathione peroxidase it will convert the reactive oxygen species that is the hydrogen peroxide into the water molecule so when hydrogen peroxide it will be converted into the water molecule then and then the glutathione it will help in the scavenging of the free radical that otherwise it will damage the DNA of the early embryo. Okay. Then what are the important points of the early response? In early response or the activation of the egg it is mediated by the calcium ion. Calcium ion that leads to the activation of the some enzymes like NAD plus kinase. NAD plus kinase it convert the NAD to NADP which is required for the lipid biosynthesis. And the second mechanism that leads to the respiratory burst, respiratory burst that form the reactive oxygen species. The reactive oxygen species, those have the spermicidal activity that prevent the lethal polish forming. And also 
there are some NADPS dependent uh, NADPS dependent glutathione glutathione that is the antioxidants that leads to scavenge the pre radical and protect the uh, egg. So the calcium chelating agent, the some of the experimental condition, the calcium chelating agent, one of the calcium chelating agent is the ethylene glycol tetraacetic acid. Okay. If we will inject the ethylene glycol tetraacetic acid into the C origin A, that then there will be no cortical granule reaction because the EGTA, EGTA it is a chelating agent for the calcium, it will bind to the calcium. If there will be no calcium, then there will be no cortical granule reaction and no reinitiation re re of the cell division. Eggs are activated artificially in absence of the sperm. Okay. The egg can be activated artificially in absence of the sperm if free calcium, if we release the free calcium ion into the oocyte because the calcium ion is just essential for the activation of the egg. In one example is that the injection of the micro micromolecular amount of calcium ionophore into the sea urchin egg, it elicit the response characteristics of a normally fertilized egg. But what is the problem? In most of the cases, the development ceases before the first mitosis because the egg is still haploid in condition and lack the sperm sensual for the division. Okay, then next drug, the late response. How the late response takes place? Shortly after the calcium ion level rises, okay, when the calcium level rises in the egg cytoplasm, what will happen? It will lead to the opening of the sodium hydrogen exchange form. Okay. It will open the sodium hydrogen exchange form and that will um, that will exchange the in 1 is to 1 ratio and the hydrogen ion will be effluxed out of the cell and the sodium ion it will be entered into the cell that lead to increase in intracellular hydrogen intracellular pH competes and the alkalinity of the cell will be increases and that will helps in the the increase the pH increase and the calcium ion elevation they act together to stimulate the new protein synthesis and the DNA synthesis. In C urchin, a broad to protein synthesis usually occurs within a several minutes up to sperm age. This protein synthesis does not depend on the synthesis of new mRNA. It utilizes the mRNA that are already present in the oocyte. Okay. So here in the diagram, as you can see that. Because of the IP3 signaling pathway, IP3 it releases the calcium ion from endoplasmic reticulum. So when the calcium ion releases, it leads to the opening of the sodium hydrogen exchange form. The sodium hydrogen exchange form it exchanges the hydrogen and the sodium ion in one is to one ratio. The one hydrogen ion it is effluxed out of the cell and the sodium ion enter into the cell that leads to the alkalinity and help in the Stimulation of cell division, DNA synthesis, RNA translation that lead to the activation of the egg. Okay, so this is about the late response. Okay, then here is the diagram. Here we will totally discuss. First, the sperm it will bind to the egg. When the sperm binds to the egg, then it will activate the phospholipase C. Phospholipase C it will produce the IP3. Then IP3 it will release the calcium ion. Calcium ion will be released from endoplasmic reticulum. That activate the NAD plus kinase. It is the slow response of activation. Or that is the early response of the activation. Okay, this is the early response of egg activation. NAD plus kinase activated. So NAD plus kinase it convert the NAD to NADP. NADP it is act as a coenzyme for lipid synthesis. So this is the step of the only response of egg activation. Then now comes to the late response of egg activation. In the late response, what will happen? When similarly when the calcium ion concentration increases, it will open the sodium hydrogen exchange form that lead to the intracellular increase in the pH and in, when intracellular pH increases that lead to the DNA synthesis and the egg activation. Next topic is the after the activation of egg that leads to the fusion of genetic material of like a male pronuclei and the female pronuclei are now will get fused. So what are the steps? 
you see our chain the sperm nucleus enters the egg perpendicular to the egg surface okay but in case of the mammal the sperm enters to the egg horizontal direction after the sperm enters into the egg the sperm nucleus and is central it will get separated from the mitochondria and the flagellum and the mitochondria and the flagellum that disintegrated inside the egg so the mitochondria which is present in the embryo that is inherited from the mother mother okay so mitochondrial inheritance is the maternal inheritance up to that what will happen the sperm nucleus it undergo the transformation in the transformation process the past the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope it will be disintegrated and it exposes the condensed sperm chromatin to the egg cytoplasm inside the egg cytoplasm what will happen the decondensation process will be started so how the decondensation will be started when the sperm it binds to the egg membrane then that lead to the uh, increase in the cyclic amp dependent protein kinase activity the protein kinase it phosphorylates the sperm specific histone okay that will phosphorylate the sperm specific histone thereby interfere with the binding out to the dna and the cyclic amp dependent process it is a cell signaling pathway like uh, if uh, the sperm it binds to the egg membrane then what will happen it will increase the adenylyl cyclase this adenylyl cyclase it will convert the atp to the cyclic amp then cyclic amp it will activate the protein kinase a when the protein kinase a activated then this protein kinase a it will phosphorylate the sperm specific proteins okay uh, the histone proteins okay it will phosphorylate the histone protein when that histone protein get phosphorylated then it loses its contact with the dna and is the chromatin it will be started decondensing when chromosome are the decondensed then that is called the now the sperm are the called the male pronucleus and it start the transcription as well as the replication process after the sea urchin sperm enters the egg cytoplasm the male pronucleus it rotates 180 degree so that the sperm centroid it is found in between the sperm pronucleus and the egg pronucleus the sperm centroid that act as a microtubule organizing center it will start to form the microtubules the microtubules are extended towards the egg pronucleus and that help in bringing or attract the male the male pronuclei and the female pronuclei towards the each other and forms the diploid zygote so like this the fusion of genetic material in sea urchin takes place okay this is the diagram and now comes to the previous year csir ugc net question so what is the question consider the following event which occurred during fertilization of sea urchin eggs Result or the spiract, result are sometimes also called as the spiract, a peptide released from the egg jelly and help in sperm attraction. Yes, the result it is released from the egg jelly and it is a chemoattractant that help in the sperm attraction. That is the correct answer. Option B, binding an acrosomal protein interacts in a species specific manner with the egg. This is also correct. The binding it will help in the species specific interaction. Option C, a respiratory process occur during cross linking during cross linking of fertilization envelope. Respiratory process occur during the cross linking of fertilization envelope, envelope where calcium dependent increase in oxygen level is observed. There is no calcium dependent or increase in oxygen level because uh, IP3 when it uh, increases the calcium concentration that lead to the influx of the sodium ion sodium ion concentration is increases but no the oxygen ion level not the oxygen level so this one is the wrong answer option D IP3 which is formed at the site of sperm entry okay IP3 which is formed at the sperm site of the sperm entry sequestered the calcium leading to cortical granule exocytosis sequester means hidden the calcium no but ip3 it is not hiding the calcium concentration but ip3 that helps in releasing the calcium ion from the 
endoplasmic reticulum that lead to the cortical granule exocytosis. So this one is also the wrong option. Which of the above statement is not true? The option as a part of our analysis, the option C and the option D both are not true. Okay, but there is no option. This question it was asked in the 2016 December CSIR UGC net. Thank you guys for liking, sharing and the subscribing my video. Thank you for watching.